A lot of people think that just being the lowest price is going to get them bookings. Whereas if they would take the time to nurture the relationship, a lot of times that's going to ultimately be what wins up uh, the customer over to them. started here. Um, Joe, thanks for joining me. Do you want to just introduce yourself quickly and tell us what you do? Sure. Yeah, my name is Joe Maxey. I am the owner and operator of Maxco Dumpsters. Uh, we are predominantly a dumpster rental business. I do a little bit of junk removal, but um, a majority of what I do is is roll off dumpsters. And I also have dump a dump trailer now. I've sold off the other two, um, but I okay. started off with dump trailers. So kind of the... Uh, full circle working on my way into the trucks. So Absolutely. Cool. So why'd you get into the dumpster business? You've been doing this a couple of years now. Uh, yeah. So we're uh, two and a half years. I started in, I officially registered the business in August. We more or less started in September of 21. Um, yeah. I mean, kind of the, the full backstory. Um, it's kind of funny how a lot of things lead you to one place in life. Um, I've done a lot of different things, but predominantly most of my, um, professional business as an adult was in the car business. Uh, I was in automotive sales and management for about a decade before, uh, jumping into this. I did take about a six month break between car sales jobs and I helped a buddy out. His parents had bought into the franchise college hunks hauling junk. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure how familiar you guys are on the West coast with them, but they're um, based out of Tampa. I know they were uh, getting pretty big, but I'm not sure how things have shifted. Junk removal's kind of blown up a lot. You obviously have like 1-800-GOT-JUNK is a huge franchise, but now there's a lot of smaller business uh, junk haulers. So I'm not sure how all the competing franchises are doing in that regard. Uh, but yeah. I helped them um, kind of get started with, with their franchise. I was a truck captain, uh, drove around one of those Zuzu NPRs for a little bit. So a combination of my sales experience and automotive sales, and then I started helping out with the junk removal through that, um, introduced me to a lot of like the landfill and kind of the gray area side of the business that a lot of people don't get to see. Right. And uh, I had a ultimatum with my employer at the time uh, I decided I didn't want to do what they wanted me to do and just happened to pull up YouTube one day and there was a video of uh, Jesse Mims. I don't know how popular he is in the junk removal side. But, hey, AF dumpsters. Uh, so I, I, Josh, I uh, actually is a buddy oh, of mine. Jesse. Okay. Yeah. 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 So Jesse Mims was like the biggest dumpster YouTuber, like 2020, 2021. Um, he had like a 30,000 subscriber channel when I came across him. There was, there was a few things I've heard a lot of mixed stories. I've never heard it directly from his mouth. So I won't, um, like I won't right. spread something I'm not real familiar with, but he ended up having a lot of like real business drama associated with his YouTube channel, competitors flagging his Google, my business page. And just like a lot of, um, real life manipulation that came from probably YouTube jealousy. A lot of yeah. people trying to just sabotage him. So he ultimately ended up shutting his YouTube channel down. Um, and I see him pop up in our face group, Facebook groups every once in a while. But for the most part, he's really not um, he's really not active in the Facebook communities anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Josh, which is AF Dumpsters, he actually started about a year before I got into it. So I discovered him all around the same time. But Jesse Mims was the first. I pulled up YouTube. I saw a video from Jesse talking about renting out dump trailers. And uh, just like immediately, all the dots kind of connected. And I said, all right, I, I know sales. I want to start a business. I'm in a, I wasn't in a great position to get started. It was kind of, uh, it was like getting started in the middle of a hurricane, basically. Sure, um, sure. I was good enough that I knew I could take a dive off the diving board and give it a shot. Um, so yeah, I mean, you had Life's Apprentice, if you're familiar with Justin, yep. Uh, yep. AF Dumpsters, Jesse Mims, and then Clayton was just getting started around the time 
on YouTube around the time I, I got started. So all those guys I've, uh, Clayton is rolling ops, right? Yep. Missouri. Yep. Yep. So yeah, we, yeah, we watch uh, all the same guys. <laughs> for sure. Well, I, I've, uh, I've got the fortunate, um, I, I've become fortunate enough to become friends with a lot of them. So, yeah. um, if you follow John same day dumpster, I know he put up a few videos. I have one or two on it, but, um, John did like the main video for it. We actually, mm-hmm. me, John, and Josh hosted uh, what we called the Lone Star Dumpster Showcase last yeah. November. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I got to have Clayton out there, Dan, the dumpster helper, Josh, John, uh, and then yeah. a lot of the non YouTube personalities, but a lot of the, the dumpster guys, which was cool. Right. So now I'm in like little text groups and bouncing ideas off each other and, you know, yeah. kind of collectively trying to work the industry in a good direction. So I love that. I, I think that, um, kind of you you being involved in that other community outside of even just your local area it, it it brings together a lot of smart minds in that are facing the same challenges you know because i don't know if there's a professional industry association but there doesn't need to be i mean all all you need is some good you know good guys and gals to help each other out um sure. like you're doing and i think that's really cool that you guys put that um kind of symposium together and come together to bring your ideas and just build those relationships and friendships out. That's awesome. That's actually one of the one of the reasons I do these interviews is because I also want to get connected with other people that are doing maybe similar or maybe the same things I'm trying to do, um, but also to kind of spread ideas and just get to build those relationships with people I wouldn't normally get to rub shoulders with, you know, in my day to day life. For sure. Yeah, it's really interesting because you have, um, you know, if you. Granted, I'm I'm 31, so I wasn't really like starting a business in the 80s or 90s. But yeah. you know, prior to 2010, 2015, where this kind of like social media, YouTube generation has kind of started out, um, you you didn't have the ability to just start a business and see a guy teach you how to do it in his own way and yep. connect with him via direct message and kind of bounce ideas. So you did have to go through the organization or the national, you know, membership right. club and pay your dues, probably didn't get half as much uh, quality out of it. So yeah, it's, a, it's amazing to be in this time period where you can just start a thing and connect with other people and build that thing to help the entire economy of that, uh, business class. To Absolutely. Take- yeah. And, and you're so right. We have access to, um, the information, people to help tools. Um, so, so much easier than like our parents' generation did. And so there's kind of no excuse in my mind to, to learn anything anymore because it's out there. You just got to have the desire and, you know, look for it in the right places. But, um, it's funny. I don't really watch any TV. I, I watch YouTube yeah. and I, I mean, my wife kind of laughs because I just watch other people working, doing stuff, but I'm like, no, that's a business and I'm, I'm getting ideas from that. And so that's entertaining to me too, to kind of like connect the dots, like you said. So most definitely. Yeah. I, uh, I do, I do a little bit of, you know, I'll do movies when I'm going to bed, but every other second of screen time is yeah. me either doing something on YouTube or working on my business. I don't, yeah. I don't just sit around and watch The Real Housewives or, you know, any. Right. <laughs> right. Like no, I enjoy, I enjoy your channel. You do a great job um, editing yeah, and, and that. all that. Yeah. So, um, I kept kind of stepping back, what has surprised you the most about um, getting into this industry? You obviously had the exposure to working with uh, the franchise group and some drunk removal. Um, but a- any big surprises that you weren't like kind of expecting or aware of? So I wouldn't say any like one big thing has stuck out, but I would say um, every little thing is, you know, it's like the the industry as a whole, it's not very complicated. At the end of the day, you just mm-hmm. got to connect the dots between your customer and yourself and then perform the service. So they say, I want this for this, you know, drop it off, take care of it. Um, so the, the the business model itself is very simplistic, but there's so much more to it when it comes to uh, like figuring out how to advertise, figuring out how to how to do your marketing, figuring out how to fix the problem when it arises, or you know, like yeah. even stupid little things like I just got a you know diesel truck, I just had to replace the batteries for the first time, finding out it's two batteries instead of one battery. You know, it's like right. it's right. it's a never-ending ball of just little surprises 
And mm-hmm. if you're not really good at problem solving and just letting the problems flow off your back, you'll uh, you'll be in for a rude awakening because there is a million and one little things that you will just never anticipate until it happens. And then that experience will hopefully make it easier, you know, year two, year three, year four, um, or you get really lucky and happen to come across a channel that teaches you all this stuff without you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm incredibly blessed because I did get to, you know, watch people like Josh and Clayton and, and all these guys where a lot of their problems didn't become my problems because, you know, I had watched them. Mm-hmm. Um, but even me, like I would consider myself maybe second or third generation of like dumpster YouTubers. Um, yeah. But realistically, prior to 2020, there was no one. I mean, there there's maybe one or two channels and they sure. weren't as hyper focused on education. They were more like, this is what I do. And, you know, follow yeah. along story. Um, you have a lot of really, really good, even junk removal too. I know there's probably a thousand times more junk removal channels than there are dumpster rental channels. Yeah. Um, but you have like John with Same Day Dumpster. He's what I would consider to be like an educational channel. Um, mm-hmm. Mine is a little bit of a hybrid, but most of what I do is just like, this is me doing a thing. And every once in a while, I'll put out some kind of like equipment information video or something along those lines. But um, I don't consider myself to be like an authority on how to, you know, grow your business to a million dollar franchise. I'm sure. just a little guy learning how to do it. So um, yeah. having a lot of people that I can watch and even having people like John that I can refer people to or Josh, Clayton, all those guys. Um, it's it's incredibly beneficial to have that resource in your pocket because even if it's not necessarily dumpsters, like small business entrepreneurship kind of is the big umbrella that everyone fits underneath and having yeah. someone to guide you through the things that, you know, you might not have ever even thought about uh, is, is really awesome. Well said. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And um, I, I feel the same way. That's why I also like to do these interviews because I want to talk to guys who, I mean, I do this on the side. I have a nine to five job right now. That's a great one. Um, so I'm, I'm an, involved in a business um, that keeps me pretty busy during the day, but you know, so I don't have a lot to teach people um, because I'm just doing this very small time, but um, it's something I do really enjoy. And that's another reason why I want to talk to other smart people is just to gather ideas from them that I can implement in my business and also just to spread some value on my channel and, you know, kind of grow this community as well and be a part of it. So um, it's, it's nice that I'm accepted, even though I do it as a very you know part-time basis. And you're right. Junk removal is a lot more obviously accessible. It takes a lot less capital. Um, and it's just a, an easier concept. You know, anybody with a pickup truck obviously could haul away a mattress or something like that. So there's of course the pros and cons to that. But, um, but yeah, I think that the dumpster space is a little bit tighter knit community and people kind of know each other, at least on YouTube, obviously for the people that are doing it. Sure. Um, kind, of, kind of going over to your equipment side of things. So I was looking on your website and your YouTube. It looks like you, you've got a Texas Pride heavy duty roll off reeving system, right? And and that's got a gas powered motor. Would you go with that system again? Yeah, It so it, it there's a couple variables to it. Um, I'm happy with the system itself. There was plenty of little hiccups along the way from Texas Pride with quality control and stuff like that. But um, if you really sit down and look at the options in the market, for the price that I spent, it was it was a good purchase. Um, mm-hmm. Reaving systems in general, so it really depends on like what your ultimate goal is and kind of what um, your your market dictates. I guess at the end of the day, a lot of guys, uh, a large majority of dumpster rental companies, when you're in the smaller category, the under CDL stuff, uh, mm-hmm. most of the guys use winch systems. So if right. you're just going with a winch system, there's a handful of companies that make a good trailer for a, a affordable price. When you go up to reeving, there's really only probably four or five that I'm familiar with that have you know a little bit of a name behind them. Uh, and they're all crazy expensive these days. So yeah. Texas Pride building a reeving system for a price point that you know I could I could tolerate um, was great. And now there's a lot of companies that are starting to pop up after my purchase that are coming out with their own systems as well. Um, Keystone would be a big one. I don't know if, if you are familiar with our event in November. 
Uh, it was actually yeah. at Keystone's facility. So they're slightly more expensive than the Texas Pride one was, and they're still newer to the market, so they don't have as many options. Um, but there is, it's it's starting to get more competitive, and I'm uh, all in favor of that. I love, I love having competing industry, you know, professionals that all are pushing each other to either be the best product or the lowest price. Um, so right. I'm I'm uh, more than open to having other options out there that are as good, if not better. Uh, but sure. yeah, no, Texas Pride is a very big manufacturer at this point, um, and they they did a good job. Everyone I talked to, the the only real negative is always been quality control. They just have yeah. this like, have kind of gotten too big for their britches, and um, a lot of little things after the sale. So I always try to point that out because I get asked that question all the time: of you know, how do you like your Texas Pride? Would you do it again? I have a ton of people that are constantly either ordering my exact setup or trying to figure out what the right setup is for them. Um, and I always say it's a great trailer, but just really be on top of them with that kind of thing. Cause they tend to just let little slip ups happen for some reason, which drives me a little crazy, but sure. Uh, hopefully they'll dial that in. Yeah. So are they a, a bit more affordable than like a protainer or Nedlin system? It sounds like. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know for sure that Nedlin was the first to do it, but Nedlin, I believe, was the first roll-off trailer um, mm -hmm. to the market 20-some-odd years ago. Protainer has always been – Nedlin and Protainer are the the two big boys uh, when you talk about roll-off trailers. So I don't believe Nedlin offers like an entry-level package, but I know Protainer now has created what they call the Geneva line. So okay. Protainer and Nedlin, if you go with like my style trailer – are both up into the 40,000 plus range, which is mm -hmm. a substantial amount of money for a roll-off trailer. Um, yeah. In the ProTainer world, they also offer, so the Pro Roll is their reeving system. That's the higher end. They offer yeah. the Geneva, which is a, a traditional winch system. Um, I've, I've had a mixed handful of experience from people I've talked to when it comes to the Geneva. Um, if I were looking at just getting... Because the rail system is important when you're talking dumpsters. Um, mm -hmm. The There's a lot of proprietary systems. I am a, a huge fan of standard rail. I, I don't think it's the only way to run a business, but I do think that the more on the same page the industry can be, um, the more affordable things are and the better they are for everyone. Right. So, uh, I always push people to go standard rail. I think it's, um, I think it's the way to go. And with... The standard rail option, if I was just going with a winch system, there's a company called Cougar that makes a really good trailer for a, a low price. Hmm. Uh, they'd, they'd be someone I look at. But realistically, at the end of the day, as long as you're going standard rail, you're at least in the right direction. Because if you get tired of it, you can sell it off and upgrade to a truck or get a different trailer. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, any any of the manufacturers that make standard rail trailers do a pretty good job. And then you get into the quality versus price conversation, right? Um, which at the end of the day, I'm a reasonable person. If you're going to save me enough money, I'll deal with a little more of the nonsense. Um, but I mean, I, I think for my roll off trailer at the time I bought it, it was right around 28 grand. So to look at like a Nedland at 45 or a Texas Pride at 28, um, yeah. you can you can hand me a good amount of nonsense to save me almost $20 yeah. to do the same thing. So it's, that's a lot of dumpster rentals, um, that's, you know, what, well, especially well, you can after profit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when I can basically snap my trailer in half and buy another one, uh, and still be relatively the same price as just one of them. It's like, it's, it's a hard sell because oh, yeah. at the end of the day, like a lot of the things that bother me are all things that if I wanted to, I could go fix, you know? Um, Whereas like it's, it's just metal and hydraulics. It's not, you know, and, you're not and they're probably them. not, not uh, bothering your customer at all. Right. Your customer no, gets the yeah. same, the same dumpster in their eyes, whether you like your trailer or not. <laughs> Most definitely. It either functions or it doesn't function. And if it's, you know, breaking on you and causing you to not be able to drop dumpsters, then you have a problem. But all the stuff that have, have been like the little quirks with my trailer that have bothered me, they're all like little stupid things that I can either fix myself or like in one of the cases, I had my hydraulics hydraulic lines blow. Um, mm. I just took it to a hydraulic shop, 
Texas pride cut me a check and you know, the next day I was back up and running. So sure. Um, yeah, it's they're They're not very complicated systems. It's just metal and hinges and rollers. Uh, so as long right. as you're greasing stuff and able to take care of things quickly, it's, you know, it's a, it's a great quality trailer. It's every pound that I would ever need it to haul. It hauls without a problem. Um, and if you're looking at some of the like proprietary rail systems, there are a couple brands where, you know, you start pushing those weight limits, you start getting bent steel or it's not picking yeah. up. Or, I don't have any of those problems. So I'm ultimately happy with it. Uh, in yeah. Capacity. Any, any desire to move into the hook lift space or do you like the flexibility that trailers offer from the standpoint of being able to use any capable truck should yours go down? So I did um, buy this trailer with that in mind. If you buy a standard rail setup, so the proprietary rail systems, you're stuck with that rail system in those dumpsters forever. If you go standard rail, you can upgrade to a truck with a cable or you can upgrade to a truck with a hook and it'll accept all the same dumpsters. The only difference would be attaching a hook to the dumpster. Mm -hmm. So my intention, and I did a lot of research, I ran with three dump trailers for the first year, almost and a half of business. Um, I... I did a lot of research so that I could scale and not be swapping out dumpsters and, and trailers later on. Every dumpster I get from this point forward, I'm going to get what's called a combo can. So it's got the cable attachment and it's got the hook lift attachment. And gotcha. those same dumpsters, whether I go to a cable truck or a hook truck or my equipment's down and I need to get my buddy with a hook truck to move right. it, um, all that stuff works. So yes, one day I would like to get into a hook truck. The the big thing with a hook truck and the reason I'm not rushing to get into it, a hook truck doesn't do anything necessarily better for me at the moment. So a hook truck is much faster, much more efficient, um, but it's also much more expensive. Right. And the only reason if you're, unless you just have all the money in the world and you know, price is no object, a hook lift truck is gonna be much more expensive to buy up front and much more expensive to maintain. Um, the insurance is a lot higher. The you know probability of your hook needing service you know over something like a winch or like a reeving system uh, is much higher. And its major benefit is speed and efficiency. So until you get to the point where consistently you're getting to the end of the day and going, all right, I couldn't complete these orders. I didn't get these picked up. Um, until you get to that point there's no real benefit outside of convenience. So I'm waiting until my inventory is big enough in size and my profits are consistently large enough that I feel comfortable, like for sure, 12 months from now, I'm going to be happy with this purchase. Because right. a lot of guys, and you know, every situation is different, but a lot of guys scale too quickly. Um, and you kind of never know what's around the corner. You know, it's like... Yeah a year and a half ago, well, actually, I guess we're closer to two or three years ago. Um, the thought of like global war wasn't really on the horizon. And now we have two major conflicts and, you know, it's like you just yeah. things happen and it's unpredictable what humanity has in store for you. So overextending yourself, jumping into, a, you know, three, four times the insurance payment, getting a two or $3,000 truck payment, all that kind of stuff. It's just, um, I'm not at the point where it's going to benefit me unless I, if I can add 20, 30 dumpsters to the mix, then sure, hook lift truck all day. But I'm a small company, so it's uh, yeah. it's easy to manage my orders right now with just my trailer. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Kind of shifting gears now over to, to the marketing side, um, your website's really clean. Did you build that? Is that a, a template system from one of the like CRM systems or inventory management? So uh, it is hosted through Docket and WordPress. So uh -huh. Docket and DRS are kind of the two are big dumpster softwares. Um, if you sign up for Docket with their web integration, they give you a WordPress website. Uh, but with that said, 100% of that website was stripped clean and rebuilt from the bottom up by me. Uh, and I don't actually come from a web design background. I just know what I like and I play with stuff and fiddle with it. And you're looking at a year's worth of just dabbling all the time and taking stuff down and putting it back up. 
Um, I did get a lot of inspiration from a, a few people that uh, I like how they've done things. But yeah, for the most part, I just, I, I do virtually everything. There's a couple things that I outsource at this point, but okay. I do virtually everything. So my brand is me to some degree. And it's very easy for that to come out in everything I do because it's all designed by these two hands right here. Uh, hey, I like it. And do you outsource? Uh, well, I guess first question: Do you do Google paid ads or other type of paid ads? I assume so to grow to your your scale. Sure. Your yeah. So I've um, I've gone back and forth quite a few times. There's plenty of months where I've had them turned off. Plenty of months where I've had them turned on. Uh, Google Ads is the the current main and really only thing that I'm outsourcing. Um, I just hired a guy at the start of this month to manage my Google ads. Uh, my, <laughs> I, it, I think it's great to know how to do everything. And uh, my opinion has always been that I want to know how to do it so that when the day does come that I hand it off to someone, I know if they're, you know, full of it or if they actually know what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, I will say that handing off Google ads is something I'm trying out right now. I kind okay. of wish that I would have done a lot of that sooner because uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. At the end of the day, you can try your best to save all the money in the world, but what you don't realize is how much it's actually costing you to not be spending money, if that makes sense. Because if you could get a really good you know, SEO game plan, you get a really good Google Ads game plan down, uh, even the money you're spending to that person will likely return more than what you will get on your own, unless you're just really good at it. And, you know, that's what you put your focus on. But trying to wear right. too many hats, is, it's become uh, it's become way too much. Yeah, I'm a dad outside of this and a husband outside of yep. this. Trying to <laughs> like balance all that and be the SEO whiz and the Google ads whiz and the web designer while I'm doing the maintenance on the trailer. Um, I will say yeah. if, if you're thinking about starting off in an industry like this, learn to give up a little bit of control and try to uh, learn from the people that you're outsourcing to. Uh, because I will say, so with the Google ads guy, nothing that he's done was revolutionarily different than what I've done for myself. But there was a lot of little things in the way that he set stuff up. You know, when I jump into the ads account and I start looking at how he's doing, you know, these metrics and this tracking and um, he just knows like the basic foundation much better than I do. So there's a lot of little things that if he would have set up my very first campaign and then I just took the reins over and went from there, I'd have been a mile ahead of where I ended up, you know, after two years of doing it. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to get professionals involved, ultimately. Yeah, I love your answer. I think that um, it's wise to know how to how to work things in case you ever need to if that guy left or something happened. But at the same time, you're, you're wise to recognize that you only have so much time. You can't do everything all the time. And so there are probably certain things that paying somebody you know, there's definitely a good ROI as long as you're finding, you know, trustworthy people that have that technical knowledge, you know, maybe beyond your, your immediate skill set. So um, I think it's hard for a lot of entrepreneurs because they feel like, oh, I'm going to give up control, which is true, but it, it's also that opens up freedom for you to do other tasks that are maybe more important, or like you said, spending time with your wife and kids, which, you know, if you neglect those relationships, you're, you're, you're going to not be happy with yourself or they won't be happy with you and vice versa. So um, it's, it's always a balancing act. I think it's hard for entrepreneurs to try and find whatever that sweet spot is of what do I take on versus what do I outsource? Most definitely. Yeah. If, uh, everything, you know, like the mind, body, soul concept, everything feeds into everything and trying to run every aspect of your business is going to take away time that would otherwise be making you happy with your wife, your kids, your hobbies, your passions. Um, Very true. And a lot of times, like I, I just did a video the other day. Um, I started out the end of December and beginning of January miserably, not like I wasn't booking anything. It was like days and even a, almost a week. I didn't get a phone call. You know, it's just 
I was really worried about it. And then I just decided, you know what, I'm going to go away for the weekend. I went out to uh, basically camping, did a little fishing, you know, whole nine yards. And it's like, as soon as I got back, my whole personality and demeanor changed. And not that that made all of a sudden my phone ring, but it's like, just everything started to come together. And then it was like, all right, now I'm, you know, not as worked up. Now everything just is naturally clicking back to where it needs to be. And I've right. had a very busy last two weeks, uh, which could just be total coincidence, but I have a feeling that a, a lot of what you put out into the world kind of comes back to you in that regard. And you're always going to be tried and tested. So, um, you know, relieving yourself and getting back to a peaceful state is a good way to kind of reset the brain and the business and make everything flow a little bit nicer. So true. And I think also, you know, you can't, you can't control everything, but you can control your reaction to them. And so if during that time, you know, and you weren't getting the calls you were hoping for or whatever. Um, but if you made peace with that and then you, you decided, Hey, I'm going to enjoy this time that that freedom that I do have this little bit of downtime, um, you know, you would have been maybe just at home or, you know, trying to run some ads or whatever you would have done otherwise unhappy because you weren't getting the results versus you took that time to be appreciative for it and do something you enjoy, you know, which mm -hmm. you'll, you know, ultimately benefits you. Um, even though maybe that wasn't your intention originally of spending the time that way, but um, it's so true. I think life is ver very short when we really do think about it and there will always be time to do more deals, more business, whatever. Um, but we only have so much free time. So it's, it is valuable to step back and take take a minute to recognize that some time and appreciate it. Sure. Well, and then also if you're the actual um, face and voice of the business, then, you know, it's like I, I'm already starting out big burly man. Um, you know, I, I already have to work toward people thinking I'm nicer than I come <laughs> off originally. Um, but you don't realize how much your tone and the way you answer things really does come off over the phone, which I did a lot of phone training in, in auto sales. So I understand that. And a lot of times when I do get turned down on a phone call, sometimes it's just price, but probably 90% of the time, it's not the price. It's the way you answered the question. And even if you give the same general answer, but said in a different way, uh, a lot of times that'll change the direction of the you know conversation and you know it, that could be the thing that leads to the booking versus the thing that got them off the phone and they didn't want to talk to you anyway so right and, yeah uh, that's great point yeah uh, be, you gotta you gotta uh, be the nice guy over the phone at all times and when you're upset or frustrated a lot of times your answers are a lot shorter and you're not trying to like be kind and guide them to the the spot you want them to be you're just here's the answer you know and, and right, no one right people like to do business with people um so they'll pay you more money if you're the person that they really like and want to do business with so that's a a, a good thing a lot of people think that just being the lowest price is going to get them bookings whereas if they would take the time to nurture the relationship a lot of times that's going to ultimately be what wins up uh, the customer over to them which is yeah and, and and you'll you know you'll if you're always just trying to be the low price you'll you'll beat your way to the bottom of the barrel and you won't be happy with the business anyway so um yeah, and and you hurt the industry in the process yeah it's a a huge problem in our industry um mm -hmm. and junk removal too to a large absolutely degree. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's funny because i'll keep track of a lot of the newer businesses that'll pop up and you know, some of them figure it out and they'll start raising price over time, but I'll see a guy pop into the local yard sale group and advertise his dumpster rental. And um, here we do, it's $92 a ton at my county landfill. And okay. they'll advertise two tons included for 225 for a, you know, three, seven day uh. rent or whatever. And it's like, if you even come close to filling that weight requirement, you're losing yeah. money. Like, yeah. It, you're After not even, fuel and insurance, anything. Yeah. For sure. Either that or they're flying under the radar thinking that they're going to not pay right. for commercial auto. And yeah, commercial auto is a, a huge one um, in our industry mm -hmm. that a lot of guys are paying upwards of $1,000 a month um, for their insurance. So, right, right. If you avoid that, a lot of guys think that they'll get away with it. But 
you know, you total out a truck without commercial auto and they figure out you were using it commercially, you're going to be in a world of hurt when the bank comes after you for every dollar you owe them. So. And, and the person who maybe was on the other end of that accident. Yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. You don't want to skimp, skimp on that. Um, I have just two more questions. I appreciate all the info you've, you've given us uh, so far, Joe. And where do you want to take your business in the next few years? Up. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, re realistically, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul. Um, so I, I do want to grow in size and scale. Um, I don't necessarily have any like franchise goals, although I'm open to franchise, but a lot of what I'm working on is just making my business that I run very good and very efficient. And then I'm also doing a lot on the connecting the industry as a whole. So yeah. like, the relationship I have with Josh and John and all those guys is very important to me. Um, and we are starting like literally a, a national uh, outlook on it. Um, mm -hmm. I collaborate with a lot of local guys around me. And I think that in the age we're in, like a franchise is cool and it's great to have your business name plastered all across the country and a lot of people flying under your flag. But if I could just have a very healthy business here that is making me all the money that I need it to make. And I can collaborate with a lot of my other local guys and we are all bouncing work off each other. Um, I would love to see my friends under their own businesses that are getting referred by me, me referred by them, um, and all just hyper successful. So really at the end of the day, I, I think that's my main focus is just build what I have here to be as successful as it can be with, you know, maybe a handful of employees and a few trucks. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean the, the world we're living in is ever evolving. And I'm trying to figure out the right way to approach it. But I think ultimately just focusing on what I have here and trying to build my online presence and connect with as many people in the industry as possible. Um, it's a unique opportunity that uh, we're right on the, like we're, we're just barely coming up the hill and people don't realize uh, what's on the other side yet. So we're doing a lot Very of true. like the, the, we're calling them showcases. We're doing the dumpster showcases. Um, so like we're trying to get into event hosting and kind of do like yearly networking groups. And even I, I'm doing another one here in Tampa uh, in March, something a little bit smaller, but um, connecting the industry as a whole is kind of my bigger vision, even beyond just the dumpster rental side of things. Well, let me know, man. I want to stay involved. I know I I'm like a, not even a minnow in the industry right now, but um to your point, I think the building the network and connecting with people is very interesting to me as well. And um, actually, my in-laws have uh, some property in Florida that we like to go out there sometimes. So um, I'd love to come out to an event sometime and bring the family, make it a little vacation for us. So just sure. uh, let's stay in touch. And that sounds like a, a really cool opportunity to be involved in. Well, um, March March 24th, we're doing a Sunday barbecue. So I don't know if it's worth the flight from California just for a hot dog and hamburger, but um, yeah, more than welcome. It would be, but uh, it's my mom's birthday that weekend. So we're going down to see her. <laughs> well, happy birthday to her. The, yeah. Um, thank you. The, the bigger picture uh, showcase we're going to do in Dallas. We haven't officially okay. announced it yet. So uh, it should be November 11th and 12th, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, that'll be out in Dallas in Josh's backyard. So okay, that would cool. be if, yeah, if you were to like make a plan to do something, that's the one to go to the Tampa one. It was, uh, more or less just me connecting with my local guys. And now yeah. I've got a company out of South Florida partnering with me. They're actually going to raffle mm -hmm. off a couple dumpsters. And, um, I saw that. That's super cool. Product. Yeah. So that'll, yeah. that'll be really interesting. It's cool to see like kind of all the companies coming out of the woodworks and, we're getting a lot of vendor support. Uh, so that's yeah. really interesting to see how that's all working out. No, that's amazing. You guys are just putting this thing together and um, I, you know, it's in its infancy, like you said. So um, I also have family in Dallas. I'd love to come out to that one. So I'll definitely uh, keep, keep tabs on all that stuff moving forward. Um, my, my last question for you, Joe, is um, you've got kids or do you have multiple kids or just one? I got three boys all. Uh, okay. All in the very dependent stage. My oldest is three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So um, 
I have an 18 month old son and um, he's my only right now. But uh, did you, when you were starting this business, was there a part of it that you said, Hey, maybe one day my, my boys could work with me in this. And are they, I imagine they've come to the dump with you and, and ride in the truck a lot. And do they take an interest in this business? Yeah. I mean, as much as a three-year-old can, I guess, you know, it's, they're, yeah. they're not really like planning on their future work with dad, but um, right. yeah. So I think every, every father to sons, you know, wants to pass down his legacy and, you know, ideally create something for them. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have any like real attachment to them becoming involved in dumpsters. If they grow old and I'm still running a dumpster company in you know, 16 years and they want to take the reins and run it, um, I'll be more than happy to give it to them. But really at the end of the day, just making the vessel that gives them the opportunity to pursue their passions um, is the the bigger picture. So if you know they want to do something outside of dumpsters, I just hope that my drive and ambition and work ethic uh, translates into whatever their passion is later in life and uh, gives them the financial means to do it. So yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, I, I love the fact that I did get to start this with them at the ages that they are, because they'll grow up every second of their life watching self-employed dad who's you know it's like at 10 a.m this morning i brought him to the park and hung out with some other kids so it's like i have a, a infinite opportunity schedule wise to do unique things that a lot of other you know families in general don't get the opportunity but definitely dad with three sons um so just making them good adults that understand what hard work is and how to uh build something on their own, I think is the, the bigger picture side of that conversation. I have no doubt that your example will be uh, a great one for them. And like you said, whether they end up in this business or doing something else, I think that they'll, they'll get to see firsthand a lot of wonderful lessons and, and learn um, from your involvement and, and or theirs in the business. Um, I know for myself, my parents had a, a printing business that my my parents started and my dad bought a printing press when he was 16 or 17, put it in his dad's garage and ultimately built a, a business that did commercial printing. They printed magazines and trade publications for 35 years and ended up selling that business to one of their, I guess, competitors, but partners really. And, and, and he taught me so much about business that, I mean, I have a degree in business, but I didn't learn Jack from school um, in my opinion, because I had already learned so much of that, from my parents running their business and, and working with them in it. Um, so I know firsthand that, you know, for me seeing my parents work in their business, the pride that they took and just the benefits financially um, that it gave our family and the sacrifices they made to, to make that happen were huge. Um, but it, it ended up coming and paying dividends for myself, my sister, and um, was something that I will always cherish those memories, you know, kind of working with my parents and seeing um, seeing how the real world operates, I was one of the only kids that always had money because I always had a job. You know, there was always something to do there. Um, and so I always had an opportunity to earn money, which was cool at a, at a young age. But um, it just gave me an appreciation for uh, the ability to work and the ability to get an education, too, because a lot of their employees um, were the, just great workers, but they didn't have opportunities that I had because of, of what they gave us. Um, so it gave me some appreciation for the world too. And, uh, uh, you know, it's something that I want to also give to, to my family, um, both financial opportunity, but like you said, I think just setting the example, um, of being a good father and also being involved in, in their lives and spending time with them is a really important thing. Sure. You, uh, bring your 18 month old out at all or. You know, yeah, he um, he came with me last night. We we did a, a real quick junk removal job. He was just in his car seat, and and it was just a curbside pickup. He comes to me with uh, comes with me to the dump most weekends. Um, you know, I, I go to the dump probably three four times a month, and, and most of my work I try to line up on the weekends. Um, so he comes with me just to kind of give my wife a break. But um, he already knows how to pick up trash, and he he can say trash is like. He only knows like 20 something words, but trash is one of them. And, you yeah. know, I, I, I see that he's watching everything I do and, you know, he sees the trailer and, and the, and the trucks and stuff. And so, 
Um, I guess a small part of me hopes that he takes interest in it. And of course, like you said, if it's not in this business, that's fine. It, it's just more in, in having a work ethic and wanting to work. That's important to pass down. It's a great way to get Google reviews too. I'll tell you what, customers love seeing <laughs> kids. Yeah, so that's true. Wake yeah. them out of the truck on a few jobs. You'll watch that uh, five-star review pop up. I have. I've, I've, uh, I've shown him off. I'm like, hey, do you want to say hi to my son? And he's like... It's, uh, it's, but it's, it's cool to be able to take him along and I look forward to the days that, you know, he'll be able to help me with a shovel and, uh, you know, just help load. There's, there's a guy down in Arizona that, um, he owns a junk removal company and his kids come with him quite a bit on the weekends. And I think that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope to have him be involved in it, um, to some degree. Yeah. Well, it'll, it'll take a while before like the labor savings comes into the equation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate all the time and insights you've provided. And, um, you know, we'll link all of your information uh, so that people can find you. But it's Maxco Dumpsters. Uh, you mostly serve Pasco County and the surrounding areas. Is that correct? Yeah, so my uh, my service area is basically four counties. I, I do all of Pasco, but then it's also Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Hernando. Um, there's a couple poor parts of some of those that I generally won't go out to but for the right money i'll uh jump even a county farther so sure uh, it's, it's just hard to be competitive at a certain point so you got to be yeah. uh either rich beyond your means or just really desperate to call me out beyond that but yeah i'll uh i'll, I'll drive i was out in riverview uh two nights ago or two mornings ago which is a solid hour and 10 minutes away from me which is pretty rare i usually i cap it at about 50 minutes but yeah, Pasco's right. my uh, Pasco's my home base. Cool, cool. Well, uh, we'll definitely try and send anybody your way that's uh, interested, and um, love to keep in touch with you. You know, over the coming years, it's been definitely a lot of fun to talk to you, and hope to meet you one day in person. Sure. Well, thank you for having me, Russell. And uh, anything I can do for you, give me a holler. Likewise. All right. All right. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, have a great day. Right. Yes, sir. Bye.